This Brothers. conference will now be recorded. Peter, get off the screen, Peter. Peter, get off the screen. Get off get off the screen, Peter. I think he misinterpreted. Bon, no, we don't want you to leave the view, but just press camera off. Bon, no, just turn your camera off. Turn off the screen. Yeah, there's a, a, a... Please, Peter. <laughs> okay. You know, you anyway, know what? Let's let's get started. Let's, uh, let's go. Tom, let's yeah, get started. Get Peter, started. get off the screen. <laughs> Is the topic of the meeting get off the screen? Is that all I hear? Peter, get off the screen, Peter. <laughs> Good one, Bob. Okay, we're going to go on with uh, with our presentation, and um, and if they're on the screen, they're on the screen. We, yeah, that's it. We've got to continue on with our uh, presentation right now. Uh, welcome, brothers. In this difficult times, we have brothers with with the uh, virus, and uh, I would like to um, have a silent prayer for our brothers that are uh, not feeling well, and um, just for uh, a few seconds. Okay, <clears throat> we will talk about the coronavirus and its impact to our HEPA communities. We will talk about how our chapters can still uh, promote a HEPA's mission. We'll talk about what we do when Corona is over. Brothers, we are fortunate to have four distinguished panelists. Brother Steve Marmaru, the district governor from District 5, who is on the uh, middle right, uh, but your name is up, up there anyway. Uh, then we have Brother Dr. Zinan Krishnazuru, uh, past district governor of District 5. We have James Zafiris, family of the board of Chapter 405. Brother Louis Katsos, district governor number six, Chairman of the Supreme Cultural Commission. We will have an opportunity to ask questions after the, uh, the panelists uh, speak. The questions can be sent in a, a text form or the chat. Um, and um, We'll start with uh, Brother Steve and your presentation. Uh, thank you, Brother Tom. I, I do want to say that you should say that the Supreme President is also at, at his I, part. Of, he, he is on the phone, if I am correct. And so maybe maybe the Supreme President, George Riatis, would like to say something. Maybe he George, doesn't. George, welcome, Brother George. <laughs> And I know you're not accustomed to speaking, but if if um, if you would want to wait till the end after the panelists, or would you rather speak now? I I, I want to hear the excellent panel, like the rest of the brothers that are here. Okay, thank you, brother George. Thank you. Um, and now we'll start with brother Steve. Okay. Oh, brothers. People are talking. Get off. Before you, start, hold, hold on. Before you start, please, if you're not speaking, go on mute because there's so much. Back. Okay. You can't hear anything. You're hearing like every other word. Sorry. It's Carmine, by the way. Hi. Hi. There's there's still five or six guys that are, have their mics on. So I'll turn have... them off, Steve. Okay. People don't understand um, that. We have uh, had discussions uh, with uh, with National and the Supreme Lodge and the district governors and having to do with the effects of the coronavirus in that at some point we will come out of this and for now 
things are going to change, but things in the future are going to change. And, and for the next, not just a month or two, but probably for the next six months, we're going to have to figure out how we're going to work as an organization. Are we going to have, how are we going to have teleconferences like this, which is a wonderful thing? Are you going to have virtual chapter meetings? How are we going to raise money? Every chapter has uh, different functions, particularly September, October are usually a big time. What are we going to do? I mean, the whole one of the things that HEPA is uh, known for and does is we raise money to give it away to help people. That's what we do. And a lot of things we do are physical. Things. We have dances, we have festivals, we go help and do stuff. And it may be a long time before we can do that. Um, so we're going to have to put on our creative hats and talk to each other and talk to everybody <laughs> because everybody can have ideas. And we need to get ideas on how we continue, how one now during the next couple months when there's no way we're going out of each other, how we keep chapters alive, how we keep the, the brothership, brothership alive. And what, we're having some technical difficulties. Are we having trouble hearing me? I hear you, Steve. And 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 also over the summer, we're going to have to figure out how we move forward in the fall. When I assume there's hopefully I'm hoping we're back to some normal things, but we still may be back to social distance. We may still have certain things that we have to include. So I think the next few months, we have to start discussing how we move forward. That's just something I think at this point, we need to start thinking about. Because if we don't, we're going to get into the summer and we won't be prepared for the fall and it's going to be a mess. It, we're going to have trouble holding everything together. Uh, it's just something I wanted to put out there and hope uh, that's something we can discuss. Thank you, Steve. Uh, and now we will go to uh, uh, Zenon. Brothers, how are you? Brother Tom, thank you so much for putting this together. I think it's an, an essential initiative that you created for us. And Brother George, Supreme jo Brother George Briannis, thanks for joining us. Lou, James, thanks for being part of it. I want to echo. We lost. What said. Thank you. Okay, I want to echo what Steve said, and this is a new reality that we're going to have to face, and not just through the summer and through the fall, but I suspect that uh, the entire way that people are going to connect, share ideas, and collaborate, maybe forever, will be changed because of this. It's not just because of the virus. But there are some other elements to this. The number one element is that technology allows for this type of communication. Ten years ago, heck, even five years ago, the technology wasn't there to allow for this. So not only is the technology there, not only are the millennials and people a lot younger than us more familiar with this, more comfortable with it than even face-to-face -face meetings, but now this pandemic has accelerated that technological leap. So I think one of the first things that we might can consider, and we saw some of the difficulties with just getting now 30 some odd of us brothers on the on this Zoom. I think one of the first, or go to meeting, one of the first things we might wanna do is to put a little tutorial together to teach people how to do this, how to operate in this new, this new reality. This virtual space is very awkward. I think it takes a little getting used to. I think particularly for people old like me, I prefer the handshakes, the hugs, and, and sitting across the table. I don't think that's going to happen as much as it used to. I think it's going to be a very different world. So the first thing that we might want to consider is educating our membership how to use virtual technologies. The second thing we need to do is to figure out now with that in place, with that infrastructure and that architecture, how do we keep people engaged? How do we keep our message going out? I personally feel, and this is a, maybe a terrible time to think about it, but I think this could be a wonderful opportunity for a HEPA and our mission statement. Because 
sometimes, and I'm sure you've all heard, the millennials are a little averse to having to go to a physical meeting every month. And there's been a drop off maybe because of that. But now that we can leverage technology, buttressed by the mandate of social distancing, we might be able to increase our membership, our reach, and our influence. So I think there are some things that we need to figure out on an organizational level to educate and promote this new medium and this new method of keeping brothers together so that we can deliver our, our message of educating not just how to use social media, but also all of our Hellenic messages, <laughs> the lectures, the webinars, all the things that we can now use in a virtual world that can go forward for the next hundred years. Who knows what technology is gonna allow for, but we have to ad adapt with it. So I'm very excited about being able to start this. Tom, I think you, you, you saw it perfectly and you, uh, you, you had a good, good vision on this. I wanna thank all the presenters and I hope we can get into some substantive discussion on how we can best deliver our message. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Brother Jim. Uh, Zane and I, uh, I accept everything you say, and I'd you, like, you're... To, I'd like to go down a different road. <clears throat> I think, for example, I have to think about specific programs. Our journey is heading to the 100th anniversary in a few years. I'm of the opinion a program should be designed to offer every community in the United States free membership in the year 2022, providing they join in 2000 and 2001. I talk about every Helene. At the same time, I'd like to suggest to Washington that the HEPA magazine, the next issue of the HEPA magazine, be devoted to different subjects. You know, George, I'm talking to the Supreme President. And this is just a personal point of view, George. And I'm not being critical here. I don't think the average member of a HEPA cares about the six to seven pages that the HEPA magazine covers on the Middle East. I think they'd rather see programs on Hellenic revitalization, the sons of Pericles, sports, chapter oriented things. Nick Nikas' project devoted to the children. He's spending too much time here, and I don't think you mentioned all the people that participate here. That may be an impressive story for people in Greece and in Cyprus, but I don't think our members care. And I'd like to adopt specific programs communicated the way Dina has suggested. But I, I would override that with the next issue of the HEPA magazine, which now, I'm assuming now that the HEPA convention in Orlando is going to be canceled. That's, that's where I'm going on this. Well, we, have, we have not made that, Jim, let me... Uh... Uh, let me tell you that we have not made that decision yet. Yes, there will be a decision that will be made for us. So uh, I ask that we, uh, you know, let's not try to put rumors out there at the current time, even though I agree it's not, um, you know, it hasn't been George, positive. George, please. George, uh, I understand that. I just said it's a personal point of view. And I believe the HEPA magazine not only should be revised summer. It should be presented on a digital basis online with specific zeroing in on the programs I'm talking about that are of vital interest to the grassroots that happens all over America. Give some thought to making every Helene on the 100th anniversary a free member of a HEPA. Yes, that's it's a big undertaking, providing they join in 2001 and, and 2000 and 2001. I'd like to hear what everyone thinks about this. So I'm going to cut out at that point. I'm listening to 
Thank you. No. Thank you, Jimmy. Brother, oh, you're still talking. I'm sorry. Should should we address? You finished, Jimmy. Should should we? If you would like, I would like to hear. I would like to hear something from Katsas, and I'd like all of us to come in to discuss. Wait, 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 wait a second. Stuart's going to speak, and then we're going to have a discussion. Correct. The panelists could really ask questions of each other as well. Uh, welcome, br welcome, brothers. I, I, I'd just like to get a little bit on point and what this um, what this panel discussion was was uh, going to be all about. Uh, when it comes to communications, I will say that uh, in our district, we started in January uh, to have a call in call in lodge and chapter meetings. Not only chapter meetings, a lodge meetings, but also lodge meetings and call in chapter meetings. When, when the, uh, the virus struck, it was obvious that we could not get together. So the mission was every chapter to create a methodology for them to communicate and to continue their meetings on a monthly basis, whether it's through call-in numbers, whether it's to, through go-to meetings. And uh, we've been on a mission for the last uh, month or so to in fact create the infrastructure chapter by chapter for them to continue to have their meetings. There are different types of chapters, obviously. Some of them have young people in the chapters, and they, they are more sophisticated in terms of what type of meetings they can have. But what we didn't want to do, and what we don't want to do, is to have a situation where our older members cannot partake in those type of meetings. So whether people want to do visual go-to meetings, or whether they want to do a call-in scenario, uh, we want our chapters to do that. We want that to be on a temporary basis, not for that to substitute eventually for us to have our monthly chapter meetings. Because we believe that without the chapter meetings, you could have a situation where a HEPA starts to fall apart. Yes, we need those technologies and we'll continue those technologies after this is over. But what we don't want to do is attempt to compete with other organizations that are different from our organizations. Our organizations are grassroots organizations based on chapters, and that's the strength of a HEPA, and that's what we want to maintain. Brother Tom uh, tasked it, uh, gave me the task really to speak, not so much about the virus. That was supposed to be really uh, by Xenon. For me, it was to discuss the economy. And, and quite frankly, that's one of the biggest challenges of this thing, uh, of this virus for a HEPA. We don't know how long, how long this is going to last, but the longer it lasts, the longer it lasts, the bigger the challenge for this nation and also for a HEPA. So, uh, for example, in the last two weeks, we have had 10 million people go on, on unemployment the largest number ever in the history of the United States of America in terms of its projection. Oh. It's going to continue next week, the week after, as state by state shuts down. What, what happens in that particular situation? Sure, they came up with a $2 trillion uh, relief, relief package, but that's not going to be enough, quite frankly, if we don't get back to work. So what's happening here is our brothers, us, have a serious problem because many of us are going to be unemployed and it's going to be a serious problem to continue some of the things that we're doing. So one of the things that we have to do some audio problems. Is, is figure out economically what's happening to our individual members. You For example, are. I've tasked the chapters to go out, speak to their members and find out who right now is having trouble, who has lost a job, who right now because many of us, not me, but many of us uh, work and, and feed ourselves paycheck to paycheck. So it's up to us right now to have informational gathering chapter by chapter to see how we can support each other. In many cases, it may be as simple as older people not being able to go shopping. So we have to continue to do what a HEPA does is to support our members and their families. I'll just, I'll just break for now because I can speak an hour about this particular topic. I will say that if this thing does not end soon, the whole economy to a certain degree Are may start us? to collapse. Yeah. 
Brother Sorry, Tom? Lou. Can you hear me? Yeah, Brother Lou, you were okay. fine. Thank you. Okay. 100%. Hello, Lou. Yes. We're having some technical difficulties. It, we we Tom, it might be heard you. the last couple of minutes from you. I think it may have been you, Brother um, Tom, because I heard Lou fine. you want to re I'll give you a couple more minutes. Bro Brother Tom, I think everybody else heard it. You were oh, you you did were hear it? flashing in and out. Yeah, Tom, Gus Constantine here. I heard every word. Okay. 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 All right. Uh, thank you very much, Lou. Now, are there any questions? Uh, you could raise your hand. Um, to, to ask of the panelists by the panelists. I think, uh, Brother Zenon, you had something to add. Uh, you were well, questioning, I guess, uh, Jimmy. Yeah, not questioning, just trying to brainstorm through this. I know that so much of what happens in Greece and the Middle East may not affect us or interest us. But first of all, that is one of the main things that we're supposed to do is to maintain our cultural integrity, which emanates from, of course, our homeland. And, and the second point I'd like to bring up is that most of our membership these days, one of our fastest growth regions is Europe. So the issues that may not be so interesting to us are of great interest to our, grow, to our, our largest growing market share. So that has to do with a lot of the evolution from a, a national organization to a global organization. So I think you're right to question it, but we need to put it in context. And it's very possible that the, the context now is not a national or North American organization, but as a global one, how do we attract and how do we provide value to people around the world who are looking to us for leadership on their regional and local issues? So I think it's, it, it's worthy of discussion, but I don't think we can just close the, 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 you have a voice, so to speak, so quickly on that because there may be a lot of people worldwide who are fascinated, interested, and dependent on our issues, on, on our support of their issues. I understand that, uh, and I'm very familiar with the numbers. However, in our own backyard, especially west of the Mississippi, a HEPA is dark. And that may well be because a HEPA is spending a lot of its resources in other places. Uh, when you look at the district members, when you look at the chapters, especially the west of the Mississippi. I have to, and I use the word dark because they're losing. I don't, you know, New Jersey, New York, and, and the East, very powerful. But I don't know whether I have the energy, resources, are spent enough in areas where there's net, where there's a necessity. And I understand full well I see the numbers in Greece. Yes, you're right. And I have this getting a lot of money, a lot of revenue from the, from the Mediterranean, from Cyprus, from Greece. Perhaps more money than it, it would get here. But I, I just can't see ignoring our nation because there are 400 chapters here. And it needs strong leadership. It needs more innovation. And I would like to have, for example, your voice is terrific. I would like to, if I could underwrite you, Zena, I would send you west of the Mississippi. I have a, you know, I want to mention something to you. <laughs> Maybe because I don't think you remember. You know, in, in, in years past, I have this with. It happens with money, a like, guy like past Supreme President Manta in Chicago. <clears throat> he underwrote the presidency of B.I. Chibidis. B.I. Chibidis was a very successful attorney who was Supreme President, I think, seven or eight times. But he couldn't afford to go out all over the country. Someone emerged. Someone paid him. He did the job. And his voice today is still one of the more prominent voices ever in the HEPA. So, you know, I'm looking at our backyard first. You know, I know you've spent a lot of time in Greece and in Cyprus, and that's terrific. 
I'm not saying we should ignore it, but when you spend 20 or 30 percent of your HEPA magazine uh, on that subject, I have a problem with that. Uh, I, I'm not saying you should ignore it. I think you should. You can easily say this in two or three pages. But what about Nick Nikas's project, which is an HEPA national project devoted to kids six to 12 years old? What about the Sons of Pericles all over America, where their membership is about a thousand, where it used to be three, five, and ten thousand? So that's where I'm coming from. Okay. Mm -hmm. You know. Um, yeah. Listen, from my from my perspective, from my perspective, uh, if I if I can answer that question, from my perspective, I think we can do both. Quite frankly, I think I think uh, brother Jim, you're absolutely correct. We have to spend more time uh, nationally to take care of our chapters and build up our chapters. But I agree with Zenon also. In other words, there are certain issues in the Eastern Mediterranean that are very important to us. For example, in New York, as you know. We're very interested in what's taking place in uh, in the Hellenic Republic and also in the Republic of Cyprus, and these are international issues that that have a tremendous influence on the United States of America. I I view those issues as not Hellenic issues or Cypriot issues. I I see those issues as American issues and as a HEPA issues. So I think we should obviously expand that that particular aspect. But brother Jim. I think you're absolutely correct. We can we can chew and walk at the same time, and we should do both. Quite frankly, I've got Thank a couple you. questions in here. Sure. Um, so the first one is George Drott Pallas. It says digital media initiatives have been proposed at Adelphi 25. I have an extensive career background in digital media and e-learning that I would like to utilize by developing online programs to help AHEPA. New York AHEPA to take the lead on the creation of a new online marketplace called the AHEPA Agora to facilitate business between AHEPA. New York AHEPA to take the lead on the creation of a career center called the Hellenic <laughs> Career Center for New York to take the lead on everything. For each I, other. This is George Bertalis. Right. Brother That's why Chris, I joined New York because you guys are people that do things. Brother, brother George, get off the mic. Listen, <laughs> listen. Obviously, that's uh, that's uh, my chapter, and obviously George and a lot of other young people in uh, in the district are very savvy in terms of telecommunications and all the rest of that. Uh, I don't want to spend too much time discussing Delphi 25 or anybody else taking over anything, quite frankly. But I will say that uh, we should all yeah. share. As, as Brother Zenon said, we can create we can create a strategy that will help not only obviously our district but all the districts around around the country. And certainly, we can bring the brains together of different chapters to create that uh, you know that menu of things the chapter should be doing. So I'm with I'm with Brother Zenon on that. I don't want any particular chapter to take the lead on anything. It's a national thing. Right. Uh, thank you. Uh, and, and also, Brother Steve, Lou, you it's, to that, one last thing to, to add to that, it's not just a national thing, it's a generational thing. Well, it's a generational right. thing, but, but Brother yeah. Zenon, the one thing that I want to preserve and that I've mentioned in our state at least, is I don't want our older members who have, may have problems with the technology for Correct. us to lose them. Because in my mind, they are the backbone. They are the Absolutely. backbone of this organization. So. I'd like to have, I'd like us to have it both ways. I'd like to, to start with the technology, create the menus, let's say for everyone to use, but mm -hmm. but don't forget, don't forget in some cases we still will be using certain other technologies which are fine, which are totally Absolutely. fine. Absolutely. Yeah. I agree. Yeah. I agree. Yeah. Also just to re Steve, reinforce Steve, did, brother Zeno, just to reinforce to what you were saying. Yes. These Thank technologies you. in particular could be used in terms of international communication. Absolutely. And that's Absolutely. where it becomes extremely powerful, quite frankly. Not exactly only nationally, point. district to district, you know, right. chapters do their own thing, but also on an international basis. Mm -hmm. I think I think that perhaps is one of the greatest things of this particular technology where I can't go across the street and talk to you, but we can talk internationally to someone in Cyprus, someone in Greece. Or let's say let's say Brother George is having uh, having this thing where we have to we have to help the police at the border of of, of the Hellenic mm -hmm. Republic. 
This way we can have people actually at the border communicating with the other members of, of HEPA to demonstrate to them what right. the hell is going on in the border of the Hellenic Republic, which is basically an American issue. It's not only a Hellenic issue, it's an American issue of borders. Mm -hmm. Hello, can I say something here? Thank, uh, thank you, Brother Lou. Uh, Chris, uh, do you want to add uh, something to that, Steve? Yeah, I, I just want to say Steve? that Yes, I would like to say something in that all these things we're discussing about technology and moving forward, it might be helpful. Every chapter or every district has people that know how to do things, how to get things done. And I would think at some point we would want to have some kind of symposium or conference nationally with, with the Supreme Lodge and with National where they can put a playbook together, like when we have the Governor's Conference, Give us suggestions. Here's how this. Here's how they do this. Here's how. So, if I'm in in our district, we're backwards. We don't know how to do things, except the, the guys from Colorado have come up with a brilliant idea on how to do something. We should. There should be a, a national network, uh, something, a warehouse where all these things can go, so we can all learn from each other. Good idea. Oh, thank, thank you, brother. Uh, yeah, Chris, Chris, do you have any other questions? Chris. I, I want to address this remark to Chris. Lou. Yeah, <laughs> Chris. Uh, let me see. Um, I've got Stavros. Let, let's, let's, Falakis, I can't say his name, pronounce it correctly. He's creating a portal for networking brothers from Brother Winston in California to bring back the job force. Hopefully that will be used through the Apple website. This is his generation. Thanks. I think to Brother Lou's point, the jobs. Who would like to pick up on that? You know. I, I just want to, you know, reiterate a lot of what Brother Lou was saying. And this is, I think, for us, job one. It's it's brothers who have been displaced, whose careers have been upended, and maybe some younger brothers who don't have the same career path and same opportunities that we were hoping they would have had six weeks ago. So we need to pull together, draw from ourselves. If we have any employers, we need to redouble those efforts to bring, you know, young happens and, and happens of all ages to a happen employers, people who have businesses. I think that we are second to none of any ethnic group in the world for our ability, our education, our intelligence, and our work ethic. And a lot of times, when things are really good, as they have been for a long time, we don't really think about asking someone for help because we're doing fine. I think we need to break down those barriers. I think those have to come down because people are quite frankly going to be hurting and possibly very soon. So yes. I think connecting employers with employees and creating some kind of infrastructure at the national level, I think that is something critical. I know that Brother George and Hoyatis and I have spoken about this for a long time to try and get a, a massive national database, not just of people's names and email addresses, but also their organizations, their affiliations, their school backgrounds, their professional capabilities, Things that people can say, oh, you know what? I need to know somebody in this university because I want to go to grad school. Why should they have to go through a yellow page just to find somebody who they may or may not know? Why not go through a brother who says, I happen to know a professor or the dean at that school or the recruiting agent at a, at a, at a corporation? If we could use this opportunity, this is really, a, there's a sense of urgency with all this, guys. You know? So maybe because it's so urgent, we can actually get this done. And I think a national database which brings yeah. together all of people's resources, their affiliations, uh, I think could be an invaluable tool that could only create a virtuous cycle of growing over the years to be an incredibly robust resource. Brother, brother, Zina, brother Zina, let me let me address that issue. Okay. And I think you're you're ab you're absolutely correct. Okay, if in fact we start now mobilizing for that, we will in fact grow a HEPA. Right. Because you had mentioned the, the growth pattern of Cyprus, Greece, and Europe in general. Part of the reason why they grew, we know why they grew, because a lot of these had to do with, with, with business connections. Yes. In right. other words, being, being uh, associated with the United States of America helped these individual members, in fact, in their own countries, to, to have business opportunities. And that's why they've exploded in terms of growth. We should be doing the same thing. In the past, a HEPA brothers were help were helping a HEPA brothers get jobs. Right now, a lot of people are going to be totally unemployed. 
they're going to be in serious, serious, dire straits. And Ahepa now has to come to the fore, as you said, to find out who's available, who doesn't have a job, who can help who. What student, let's say, if they're if they're members of the Sons of Pericles, has to go to a particular university to get a another degree? Who can they associate with? This is what we have to do as part of a HEPA. I agree. Hey, Tom. Very good point. Thank you, Chris. Any more? Chris, yeah, questions? Gus, Gus Constantine wants to talk. He has a question. No, no. Let him let him give the question on on the chat. On the chat. Yeah. All right. Uh, and Dennis, any other Dennis, questions? Yeah, Dennis Zakharopoulos, he says something as simple as a LinkedIn group would be good enough for a quick start. Yeah. Okay. We're, we're on LinkedIn. Sure. We're on LinkedIn. Yeah, sure. Mm -hmm. But we should have our own database, as Brother Zenon said. I we think. I that. think. Listen, we we should have our own database about this. We really yes. should. Right. You we know, can do our, it now. And and that gets to that gets to brother Jimmy's point about expanding membership and maybe yes. giving some kind of free memberships, maybe not a full membership, but an associate membership where we can get every Helene and Phil Helene to sign up with some data to create that 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 database. Yeah, but brother brother Zenon yeah. and brother brother Jim, okay, when we talk about free free Ahepa, okay, free Ahepa, come on, seventy five hundred bucks. You know, yeah, if you're going to join, if That's you're going to join, if you want to be a member of a HEP, that hundred dollars or whatever it is for a chapter is meaningless. If if what we're talking about, Brother Zenon is talking about, and others are talking about, if we do this, people will become members. That's why they're members in Greece. Right. That's why Greece and Europe is expanding exponentially because they're linking up business-wise. I'm not saying that this is a business orientation in terms of a HEPA. All I'm saying is we have to help our brothers. It's very important, right? Now. You know, you know, uh, uh, Lou. There's a difference between it and ethnicity. In case you've got a common denominator, where brothers help brothers. Yes. What you're saying may not apply in the United States. Uh, I, I don't. Ag I don't agree, uh, 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 brother Jim. I don't agree. Don't forget. Don't, don't forget your chapter. Your chapter. Your chapter was having these events where they would bring different people from different industries and, and actually true. discussing those things. Those are positive things. Those are the type yeah. of things we're talking about and going beyond those things. I, you've done it. You've done well, it and it's helped. It. We've done it with Korea Days. We're still yes. like, we, did a, we do Korea Days and it, it turned out as enormous. Yes. And families come out, but I don't think, you know, in Greece you've got a common denominator. In the United States, look, it's the same. It's the same. Greeks. It's the same thing. It's not about I Greeks. Think. It's not about Greeks. It's Greeks or Hellenes and Phil Hellenes. I think all people right now are interested in employment. I think it's important. I think our members are, are going to be hurting. Our members are going to be hurting. We have I to find think. a mechanism to help our brothers out. We really do. And it's not about being Greek or whatever. It doesn't matter. But you know, it, that's why I'm saying you have the magazine. Take a role here. Do you know how many Amer Greek American presidents there are of universities? Many. How many how many Greek Americans there are in high profile corporate positions that people are not aware of? Yes. I mean, I was one of them. And I gotta tell you, <clears throat> and the new president of the University of Connecticut is a Greek. The, the provost at, at University of Southern California is a Greek. The lieutenant governor of the state of California is a Greek. The, the Greek American community may not be aware of these people. These we people, agree. they need publicity, they need a profile, and I'm looking at the HEPA magazine to, to do something about this. Korea days are priceless. We did it in our chapter, and you saw it yourself, yes. and we did a fabulous job. But it works in our chapter because we're a third and fourth generation chapter. And and, and, and the needs of these third and fourth generation Greek Americans are different. It is no longer Papus, I have a, it's a new generation of Greek Americans, second, third, and fourth generation, whose needs are different today than what they were for our fathers or our grandfathers. But, but Brother Jim, you have to understand, it's a new generation, but the new generation is asking 
what's in it for me? The new generation goes to where what's in it for them. What I'm saying is what's in it for them, if we can establish, as you say, different people, different industries, different, different associations where people can help each other out to get jobs and things of that nature, then what's in it for them becomes important to join a heifer. It really does. In terms of reaching out now, in terms of the HEPA magazine, the HEPA magazine can't go out and find the thousands of Hellenic American professors. We have to do that on a, on a district by district basis, knowing what universities, for example, are within our state, reach out to those university professors who are Hellenic, ask them to join a HEPA. They have Hellenic students and other students that also are in their classes, bring them into the Sons of Pericles, there's a, there's a lot of infrastructure that we can build while we're doing the other things that Brother Zenon was talking about, which are very immediate, which are very what, immediate. What Brother Zenon said is correct. Yeah. There is a, ne a, a necessary database that we have to amend. Do you know how many HEPA magazines come back to Washington because the addresses are wrong? Do you know how, and if the addresses are wrong, the emails are wrong. The database that you're talking about, Zenon, is absolutely a must. It's going to require an enormous investment of people in Washington, and it starts. I don't think, yeah, it but brother, Je brother well, Jim, it can't it can't I, be I, done I, that I, way I, because I, the resources do not exist. So, it has to be done, I think, on a district by district basis to help to help, let's say, a national a national person who may help put it together. But in reality, you can't expect Washington to do that. You can't. It's too big okay. a job. Okay. Well, Thank you very much, guys. Uh, I, if there aren't any more questions, uh, then we'll have our Supreme President speak. Any, wow. uh, Luke, I mean, Luke. Chris, any questions? Well, thank you, Tom. Chris, uh, can wait, everyone wait, wait, wait. Chris, are you done? Hold on, George. Sure. Chris, okay. Go ahead, Brother George. Well, uh, first things first, I'm not going to join the screen. Uh, I'm enjoying watching uh, all of you. And uh, I did take your uh, messages. My understanding is that you have recorded this uh, symposium? Yes. Okay. I would like to really get a copy of it, it's too. It's being recorded. To, to, the brothers that, uh, to the brothers that have responded with those suggestions, uh, particularly with regards to... Um, and internet-based and or media communications, you know, share share them with us uh, because uh, it's not just for New York; it's uh, it's really for uh, for all of us out there in the Hepa land. Uh, to all of you that are that are on the screen, and and to everybody that's uh, listening this evening, I um, you know bring you uh, uh, my prayers for our health and uh, for God to give us the strength as we navigate through these uh, times. Uh, you uh, have asked me for my ideas, my thoughts, recommendations, uh, and uh, I would like to just spend a couple of minutes providing you with my perspective on our actions as a HEPA and how uh, those actions have taken fruition during this pandemic. Um, much like uh, the rest of society and uh, to many organizations that we belong, we have ceased uh, temporarily personal interaction. Uh, each and every district of AHEPA globally, from the United States, Canada, Cyprus, Europe, and Greece, uh, has been advised to create uh, two different committees at the chapter uh, level as well as at the district level. Those committees are a technology committee designed to interface the population on internet platforms, such as what you're doing now, <clears throat> um, wherever possible. And I can tell you that. This is probably the the eighth um, district and the region that, that I've been this week with regards to uh, these type of meetings. Uh, we've also asked uh, each uh, district and uh, to get to their chapter with a health and wellness committee designed to reach out to the elderly in our communities uh, for assistance. And and I see that that has been happening in, in many uh, areas particularly in America, uh, as well as in Canada. Uh, I report to you that uh, these uh, health and wellness committees um, have taken root not just in the HEPA, but 
but uh, in many of the churches in America and Canada as well. Uh, the conferences, these video conferences have expanded beyond just the local chapters as evident uh, tonight. Uh, we have had uh, two rounds of, of district and regional conferences. And this weekend, we're kind of taking a week, uh, weekend off as, as over half our districts have, uh, have conferences such as this one. Um, as we have gotten into it on Zoom, we've had, we've had uh, uh, conferences with happens, uh, happens from Winnipeg to Cyprus, from Germany to Texas on one conference. In other words, we're, we're starting to mix it up and, and allow them to go beyond their uh, uh, region. And I, I think that things are fresh as well. Often on these conferences, we allow a, a portion of the communication to be merely about nothing, um, uh, with no social qualities uh, whatsoever. Uh, a concern of uh, mine, and, and, and should be all of ours, uh, is that we are really fighting against uh, the isolation between us. Uh, this is a principle uh, that... Uh, that I'm, I'm seeing, and I think we're all kind of getting a sense in, in our everyday life. Um, uh, I don't um, uh, want us to just continue to have meetings in terms of virtual interaction. Uh, it should not be just about, you know, log on at this time because we need your vote on a certain topic. You know, we care just to hear about you. Um, also, um, uh, another thing that's been going through AHEPA is, is remote access. Uh, uh, AHEPA is the, uh, the nation's leader in the affordable housing, and many chapters that I've visited uh, meet at these senior housing facilities. Uh, there are many that, uh, of course, we know here uh, in New York and in New Jersey that meet our churches or have space dedicated to the local chapter on the church grounds. Um, there's even districts that have a district central office, and in, uh, in Athens, uh, I placed a, a district central office there in January. Uh, and of course, we have our global HQ in Washington. Um, I can tell you that uh, Washington, uh, and we've given these updates to our to our regional uh, supreme and, and district governors, is uh, is still open. Uh, it's it's uh, Washington itself is is shut down. Um, uh, however, uh, we send people in. And we have provided them with remote access uh, as well. The point is, brothers, that remote access allows key personnel, whether it's in a chapter, uh, whether it's in a housing project, uh, wherever it might be, uh, to process administrative duties from their home offices. Um, and uh, so let me just turn the page, I guess, to the COVID-19 messaging. I think that's been, uh, at the very least, adequate. Um, uh, I would like to think it's great, but um, I know uh, we've uh, constructed an active resource page, and uh, I have uh, sent many uh, messages on that uh, resource page, spanning from not just health and wellness, but but to the economics, to the restaurants, to to you know the financial, to um, the uh, the assistance that's being doled out by the federal government right now, um, and uh, and we're going to starting more and more with. Uh, not just news, but continue to do videos. I saw my ugly mug uh, just a couple of days ago with, with regards to that. Um, and it's important for us to keep these type of messages as well, um, you know, uh, assuming uh, that these are um, positive messages. Uh, administrative remedy. Um, I, we've spent um, much time uh, as a Supreme Lodge going over our organizational documents. Uh, we've allowed districts to reschedule their local conventions or to do them virtually. We've allowed chapter officers and even district officers to be elected virtually. We've postponed scholarship deadlines at the global and have encouraged uh, postponing scholarship deadlines at the district and the chapter levels. We've created a system where we do not need to receive uh, original uh, signatures, uh, anything designed to ensure that we can keep our people indoors while doing as much as we can uh, with regards to uh, everything from from scholarships uh, to, uh, you know, sending things to Washington. Uh, and we will continue to look at, uh, as you see with our most recent announcement uh, in terms of rescheduling the uh, the banquet, uh, we will continue to look at these things uh, the deeper we get 
uh, into uh, May and, and, and frankly into June. Um, and, and brothers, I think the next thing that, that, that may have to go that I, uh, I'm working on right now is is uh, a program that's near dear to my heart, and uh, and that is Journey to Freedom. So uh, that is even uh, in jeopardy, so to speak. So forgive me; these are just my thoughts and my impressions when uh, you've asked me uh, to speak uh, on these topics. Uh, actions that 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 we're we're taking uh, more uh, now uh, in the present day sense. We've provided information on the stimulus package, and I agree that we have to continue to highlight that. We've uh, highlighted and continue to highlight action to my chapters uh, and individuals uh, during the crisis uh, itself. Um, uh, for uh, you've seen uh, this uh, this Dr. Zawoudis that we've we've uh, highlighted uh, in the heaven that is now uh, in Athens. Uh, he uh, is running the uh, Greek ministry's uh, response to COVID-19. And we have uh, many in our community, of course, uh, as well, that are, you know, working in hospitals uh, uh, and the LIBA. Um, other concerns uh, for the uh, for the short-term future, I can tell you that um, it's, it's dues. Um, there has to be a greater uh, focus by the chapters uh, on not turning off uh, the faucet. You know, because uh, if uh, something like that happens, then our ability to uh, to advocate as you see that we continue to do will be uh, necessarily uh, impeded. Um, going into uh, Easter, it is uh, my intent to call for a uh, worldwide uh, Hellenic response to do something special for our medical, fire, police, and first responders. You saw Denver chapter, you saw the Daughters of Penelope. Um, there's chapters uh, that will be asked to provide meals from those segments of our society um, in honor of our Lord's uh, resurrection. Not to go personally to a hospital, but at least if you are at a grocery store, buy water, Gatorade, foodstuffs for those people. Leave it at the police or fire station with a note from the Ahepa and take a picture of it. Um, we have been in communication with the Archdiocese with regards to um, going further into from April to May, I have a Sunday. It's the third Sunday of May, and we're asking for the encyclical at this time. If churches uh, reopen, although that seems certainly unlikely, then the Hepa would, you know, continue to have either a table or provide monies for memorial service on that particular Sunday. And uh, if we're still shuttered, uh, we will be doing something in this regard in our in our new uh, virtual uh, world. Uh, brothers, uh, in addition. We continue to advocate. We have had a call to all communities in America to fill out the census forms that each resident uh, has received. We continue to advocate in Washington and in Brussels. And we're in the process, uh, as the uh, the brothers had mentioned, uh, Brother Luke Katzos, Brother Steve uh, Marmaru, uh, we're in the process of providing relief to the Greek uh, police at the Avalos border, replacing broken protective gear, and equipment for the police. Uh, so uh, I want to uh, thank you uh, for allowing me to be a part of the uh, process. I consider each and every one of you, whether or not you are uh, running uh, the show and, and you're on the screen, and or whether or not you are just merely, uh, uh, you know, putting in uh, uh, ideas in the chat box, uh, we consider uh, each and every one of you as a uh, trusted uh, resource and. And uh, I guess in conclusion, I look forward to uh, hearing more from uh, each of you and uh, even greater. I, I look forward more to seeing each of you when this uh, situation is over. Brother George, we might, uh, if you have the time, there might be a couple of questions. Um, I, is there any, Brother Chris, do you have Somebody just sent you a question uh, of the for George to answer. Yeah, Dennis Zakharopoulos. Yeah, in the short term, we should give as much money as we possibly can to our hospitals. Give money, not things. Things are hard to administer, especially now. That was a, a comment. Okay, do we have any, uh, George, do you want to address that, Brother George? Well, um, it's a, it's a uh, you know, very difficult situation. We are having 
uh, hospitals and, and we're, we're being advised, uh, you know, of this uh, shortage. The shortage is not just uh, in one particular uh, part of the country. It, it's uh, it's worldwide, right? So um, uh, it is frustrating because uh, there is nothing that you can uh, do quite literally with regards to, you know, giving funds to a, to a hospital, um, you know, for these uh, protective equipment as well as the ventilators, which are so important right now. Um, the one thing we can do is, uh, like I said, uh, we're looking forward to um, all of the ideas, including the uh, the jobs that, are, that you guys have mentioned and, and following up on the programs that we have. And, and I think uh, just to continue to uh, check that COVID-19 resource page uh, with regards to updates. Um, thank you. The one thing I'd, I'd like thank to you. add to that, if I could add just about giving money to hospitals, Oftentimes, we give supplies, and they're not the supplies that are needed at that time. Just recently, I was with the Department of Homeland Security and Preparedness in New Jersey, and we were talking with some of the state directors, and they were saying that a lot of times in crises, people like to self-deploy themselves to help, and they like to give things they think people need. And that is absolutely the wrong way to do it. What we should do, I believe, as, as it happens through our chapters and through our districts, is work better with the state agencies to create an immediate conduit. So on a day-to-day -day basis, when they need a particular supply or a particular resource in a particular location, that we can deliver what they need when they need it and not to use our own judgment, maybe by hearing what our neighbors might want or what the news tells us people want. That actually oftentimes tends to be the wrong thing to do. I remember after Sandy, people were giving nothing but water. They said, we need water. Well, they had so much water, they didn't know what to do with it. They really needed containers and socks and blankets. But we didn't know that we were behind the curve. So I would encourage maybe that this is something for a future discussion, but to connect much more closely with the state agencies. As many of you know, New Jersey has created the Hellenic Heritage Commission, which works directly with the Department of State, the Attorney General's Office, and the Department of Homeland Security. I would recommend maybe in each state we create those kind of relationships so we can deliver appropriate things in a timely fashion. Uh, George, I, I, thank you. Yeah, I have a question. Uh, if Just nobody has anything to ask, Jimmy, you uh, do? I have a question. Uh, George. During World War II, uh, the the bond effort that HEPA produced was was magnificent. Have you had conversations with Leadership 100 or Faith Endowment to partner with them in raising a million dollars to build generators uh, to to contribute what what the hospitals need? But we need the support of the of, of people with the money, the Hellenic Society, and the and Faith Endowment and Leadership 100 in partnership with the Order of Ahepa. If the four of us put our heads together, we could raise that kind of money like we raised for St. Nicholas and make an enormous contribution that America could feel uh, in the area of supplies. Uh, your thoughts? Well, that's a, I mean, a, it's a great idea. What can I, what can I say, Jim? You're, 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 as always, Brothers of Fearis comes up with a wonderful idea at some point in time in the panel discussion. And yes, Jim, uh, I will, uh, I will work on that. Thank you for the idea. Brothers, I need as much help as I can get. And so do all of we in this, uh, this type of crisis. Thanks, Jim. Uh, can I, I have a question can, can, before, 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 before you have a question, let me, let me just respond to what Brother Zenon uh, stated. As we all know, or we should know, that there are different needs in different states. And as Brother Zenon indicated, is the appropriate districts really should be involved with their states. You, you can't do some of these things on a national level. They have to be on a state level because there are different needs within the states. So Brother Zenon's idea and concept is absolutely correct. That's the appropriate way to do it because you're going to raise or bring supplies or what have you relating to the needs of the states in particular communities. And you have to go through the state basically. So, so Brother Zenon's concept is absolutely correct in this particular scenario. For example, there may be, there may be 
a Hellenic person in New Jersey or in New York or what have you that has 3D printers and they can use 3D printers to print face masks and or and or some of these other things like ventilators on a 3D basis. There may be people like that. I don't know. These are the type of things that HEPA got involved with that individual, with those companies through the state. Then a HEPA can have a tremendous influence, quite frankly, on a national basis, district by district. Brothers, thank you very much. Uh, I think we, um, we have a lot of good ideas, and I think that this is going to be very helpful. We have it recorded, and um, I'll make uh, a copy of this uh, meeting. Uh, uh, make sure that, George, you will get it with the rest of the Supreme Lodge. And um, any chapter or any uh, uh, district leader uh, would like it, we will make sure that you have a copy of it. Um, it, it, I think it was very, very productive. The ideas are wonderful. Uh, and we'll all pray to God that this pandemic is over with uh, soon and um, that we stay healthy. God bless and good, good night. Good night, brothers. God bless you. God bless. God bless. Good night. Brothers, take care. Good night. Good night. Be safe. Good night, everyone. Take Be care safe. Now. Love Thank to your families. Brother Jim, you're the best. <laughs> you are the best. No, you're the best. <laughs> Brother Zenon, thank you. Brother Steve, thank you. Brother Tom, thank you so much. This was great. Brothers, great job. Brother Tom, great suggestion, great idea. Let's keep it going. Good evening. Good morning, Tom. Thank you. All right. Good thank night, you, everyone. Brothers. Thank Good you night. very much. Chris, thank you for your technical help. You're welcome. And, um, Even though it was a fan. What we're doing. We're <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. It worked out good. Better, but it was okay. It was okay. We did the best we could, and uh, we'll get better. I think we're going to do more of these, yes. and um, and we'll get we'll get. Uh, anyway, thank you very much. And we could, uh, uh, you know, actually, if you still want to talk, <laughs> well, you can you can shut off the recorder, and we could just BS now. So that'll be good. <laughs> that that won't be. It. Yeah, turn off the recording, Chris, please. Yeah, hold on. Chris, are you with us? He's there. Yeah, I'm here. He's there. He's you on. want me to stop, dude? Stop the recording. <laughs>